little bit in the last session about how to change hair and how to change skin and things like that, but you're going to have opportunities in Second Life to change clothing a lot. And I wanted to talk to you about how clothing in Second Life works, how it's layered, and how you change from one outfit to another. Jocelyn here, you can see we've changed her hair. Jocelyn here has got very plain, I think this was the original shirt, and I might have put a pair of jeans on her. But if you look over at my inventory, you can see that in a folder that has an outfit, there are all different components to an outfit. And outfits can be layered in Second Life just as they can be layered in real life. For example, in your upper torso, what I have on right now and what Jocelyn has on are shirts. And shirts have this shirt icon that indicates that they're a shirt. But there are other pieces that you can wear on your upper torso as well. You can wear an undershirt, which looks like this, and then you can even wear a jacket, which has a little jacket icon. If I right-click on this and I want to wear it, what it does is it puts it on underneath my shirt. So that's why you really can't see it. So on your upper torso, things go from undershirt to shirt to jacket. Now if I take it off, you'll realize it's been taken off. But that's how stacking works. So you will have outfits that may only have a shirt, or you may have outfits that have layers. On the bottom, what you have obviously would be underwear first, and there would be called underpants. And then you have on top of that pants. And then you might even have on top of that a skirt. And then there are these blocks that are actually crafted prims that would sit yet on top. So let's, let's look at these a little bit. Now, when you first get into Second Life, you bring your cultural footprint with you. And for most of us, your cultural footprint says that you don't change clothes outside. In Second Life, when you first come in, you will find you'll be looking for some place to be able to change clothes where no one can see you. And that's absolutely natural. Typically speaking, when you put on an item, if you've got that same layer on already, it replaces it. So you're never actually naked unless there's some latency in the client that causes you to be naked for an instant before the new thing appears. I'm going to let you see Jocelyn here, and we're going to let Jocelyn change clothes out of her inventory, and then we'll show you how it works in the inventory I showed you. Now Jocelyn's got a shirt on right now. I'm going to go to her inventory and look for a shirt that's with a created outfit that she bought. So Jocelyn's going to wear a shirt now that's going to take the place of the shirt she has on. And just as we saw how with the skin there was this little blurring for an instant as the new thing rezzed or has its resolution. It's going to happen the same way with Jocelyn. Now I've changed her shirt and there's some latency, but you can see now that the new shirt shows up and it takes the place of the old shirt. So you don't have to take the first thing off in order to put the second thing on as long as it's the same layer. Now with Jocelyn, this outfit she's going to wear also and most outfits, at least for women, will have some kind of pant that goes underneath the skirt. So now I'm going to change the pant layer, which then will change the pants that she has on. It'll switch them out. And we're going to wait just a second for her to switch. The other thing that this particular outfit will have is it will have a skirt then that goes on over the pants to create the dress look. Now again, all of these pieces are in an outfit that was purchased, and you can see that the design here is far more elaborate than what was on that shirt she started with. And this is where you get into the crafting of fashion. And fashion is a huge industry in Second Life, and if you decide to do that, a lot of these textures 
that are used in sequin looking things and lace looking things are all part of texturing which is basically photoshopping or some other specialized programs. So you can see right now that the outfit she has on is much different than what she had on when we started. There are gloves, there are shoes, there's, an ent there's a whole plethora of things that you can wear and if we look down in my clothes horse of a closet I have all kinds of gowns, I have, I have shoes, I have jewelry, I have all kinds of different things that I can wear. So under my clothing, you can see that I have lots of clothes, but I also have lots of different sets of shoes. So if we want to change on me, we want to change the shoes I'm wearing, if you look down. What most shoes have is three things. They have a shoe for each foot, obviously. But then what they have, let's try a shoe that looks a little different here. What they have is a base. So you put the base on first, which is going to make the shoes I have look a little weird because the base wasn't made for those shoes. But then I'm going to change and wear. And what it's going to do is it's going to replace what I have on. So as these go through a resolution process, you're going to see that they were made from prim, so the, the basic prim shows first, and then as they res, they res into the form that they'll finally take. And I'm looking here, and it looks, there we go. Okay? Shoes are another huge industry in Second Life. You can see how, uh, how advanced my shoes are compared to the shoes that Jocelyn has on. So if, if this is the kind of thing that somebody wanted to get into as a business, now let me, let me edit these so you can see what's involved with these shoes. There's different shapes that have been textured. There, there's all kinds of different things going on, but it's not nearly as complex as the hair. So this is how outfits are changed in Second Life. Thank you.